This program was made possible by a generous grant from the Parker Foundation. Gerald and Inez Parker. Romance of the Ranchos. The words bring images perpetuated in song and film of happy times, of fiestas, of caballeros dressed in outfits trimmed in silver and their ladies twirling around a dance floor in long dresses with swirling skirts. Certainly there was that. But there were also long hours of tedious work. 300 Native Americans helped build Rancho Guajome. And there were also reports of a leading ranchero getting away with murder. At one adobe, modern visitors swear they've heard ghosts. These rancheros of North San Diego County were pioneers who lived off the land via cattle, crops, and their strength of character. After Mexico's successful revolution from Spain culminated in 1821, Mexican governors in California began distributing land grants, some of them huge, like the giant 133,000-acre Rancho Santa Margarita y Las Flores, most of which is now one of the largest Marine Corps bases in the world. And some of them were small, down now to only a few acres. Movie stars of their times played bit to major roles in the ranchos. Joan Crawford donated the big tree in the courtyard at Buena Vista, and Charlie Chaplin visited. It was owned by Margarita Fisher, a big star in silent films, and her husband, Harry Pollard, a Hollywood director. And Leo Carrillo, of Cisco Kid television fame, owned his own rancho, reflecting the heritage of his ranchero forebears. Some of the ranchos, Guajome, Buena Vista, and Carrillo, are in public ownership with tours on a regular basis. Others, like those on the Marine base, still allow the public, but on a more restricted basis. Some owners, like Shelley Caron, schedule regular school groups to view her Maron Adobe, and others, like Pat and Karen Kelly on portions of the old Rancho Agua Edionda still revere the adobe, part of their own private home. Much of the ranch land, including most of the current city of Carlsbad and property that was once owned by Oceanside City Councilman John Steiger, have given way to modern development. In this series, KOCT remembers the adobes and ranchos of early California. In our series, The Adobes and Ranchos of North County, we've taken viewers on tours of the many beautiful and historic adobes and ranchos that still dot the landscape. Some have been restored carefully. They provide today's residents with a glimpse into our California past. Our video tour included two historic homes in Carlsbad, the Shelley Carone and Kelly adobes both reminders of the once extensive holdings of land baron Juan Maria Romoldo Marón, who received the original Mexican land grant of 13,000 acres. But at one time, there were many more historic adobes. Shelley Carón is believed to be the only land grant descendant still living in an original adobe. She recalls that at one time, at least eight adobes existed along Marón Canyon which is now shadowed by Highway 78. Today's story is about a local family whose matriarch was born in one of those Maroon Canyon adobes. On my mother's side, my grandmother was in the Serrano family. And there was a Serrano soldier, Spanish soldier, with Padre Serra and Portola's group that came into California in 1769 when the Spanish uh, were worried, uh, you know, about the Russians maybe coming down, and uh, and they also had the English pirates offshore who were getting into their uh, uh, 
Spanish galleons that were coming across the Pacific and, uh, you know, they, they had problems. And so they decided that they were going to uh, come up into Upper California or what we know as California today from Baja California. They had already been down there for a long time. The Serranos uh, had, they were, uh, they got the Palma land grant. If you've heard of the Palma land grant up above Pala, and it was 13,000 acres. And uh, it was uh, uh, granted to the Spanish colonists uh, by the Mexican government. They had, uh, this is, the Mexicans had kicked the mission people out, you know, and they'd taken over. And, and so the smart politicians that were left here, the, the colonists, the Spanish, uh, they, they played good politics and they got something in the way of land grants and they had to get it through the government at the time, which was the Mexican government. So their, their Sp Mexican land grants to the Spanish colonists is what they were. Well, the Palma land grant was 13,000 acres. Sounds like a lot of acreage, but they took that much to feed a large family, uh, to take care of the people that worked uh, around there, uh, and to feed the cattle. And uh, they, they were land poor. John Steiger was a former Oceanside City Councilman and dominant figure in the Oceanside community for decades. He was a former realtor, perhaps best known for turning 1,600 acres owned by the late Olympic skating champion and movie star Sonia Henney into one of Oceanside's poshest neighborhoods, Henney Hills. John's family has deep roots in Oceanside and in the history of California. Well, as time goes on, where does my family come into this? And uh, on my mother's side, uh, her name was Marone. Uh, in fact, my mother graduated from Oceanside High School, class of 1913. She lived out here on Vista Way uh, in one of those adobes. The one she lived in uh, was torn down by vandals uh, many years ago. It, it was located where the auto club is now. Uh, her grandfather was across the street uh, in the, the one that the uh, uh, Fred Hayes' family had has restored. It had gone down to just a wall or two, and uh, that's been nicely restored by the uh, Hayes family. The Hayes family, Fred Hayes would have been a, a cousin of my mother's, first cousin. His, his mother, uh, Philippa, was uh, a sister of my grandfather, Juan Maria Marone, <laughs> who was the son of Sylvester Marone, who had, the, who was a son of a, another Juan Maria Marone, uh, and the, the the grantee of the Agua Hedionda, I'm jumping now from the Palma land grant to the Agua Hedionda land grant, uh, and that was another 13,000 acres. That's the one we know of locally. That took in part of Oceanside, a part of Vista, part of a, a lot of almost all of Carl's dad. Uh, 13,000 acres is a lot of acreage and uh, they lost 10,000 acres of that to, to the Kelly family. The Spanish uh, prevailed and uh, in my mother's high school class uh, there was a gal by the name of Carolyn Steiger uh, who became my Aunt Steiger, Aunt Carolyn later on. But they had, uh, they were a German family who'd come to America and in the 18, uh, early 1880s and uh, hit Ohio. My father was born in Ohio uh, and he came uh, with the family obviously when he was three years of age in 1888 into the upper uh, San Los Rey uh, Valley and uh, they uh, were they became truck farmers. They were a large family, uh, three boys and four or five girls I forget. They all, you know the thing was large families in those days they didn't have television you know and they <laughs> They uh, kept, kept busy uh, taking care of their families. And uh, so as the years went by, well, uh, it happened that my, my mother met uh, Carolyn's brother, John, and uh, they, uh, they were married. And uh, they bought a house on Dittmar Street and, uh, in uh, 1919. And I was born on April 5th, 1920. Uh, Oceanside uh, in, in those days, uh, well, a, as a child, I can remember my grandfather uh, coming in from uh, Vista Way out here on the on the uh, on his old from his old adobe and uh, in a, on a horse and buggy, 
And uh, every so often, well, I'd get to ride back with Grandpa to the ranch. And uh, I can remember it was a long ride, and uh, I'd sit, you know, it was a little buckboard type uh, uh, buggy, and uh, uh, it seemed like it took forever. I, I remember my legs would go to sleep. I'd, I'd be sitting on the floor of the, of the buggy. Uh, I forget who else was in there, but, but uh, that's where they put me. It was safer, I guess. The roads weren't, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they were used to going on, you know, the tracks. They just followed the tracks, and it was out in the, there was nothing. Mary Steiger, the widow of John Steiger, who passed away in 2008, reads a handwritten letter from her late mother-in-law, Laura Marone Steiger, recounting the older woman's younger years in Oceanside. My name is Mary Steiger. I was married to John Steiger for 55 years. Uh, his family, as you know, uh, went back many, many years in history. I think both sides of the family had major land grants in the area. Um, I found these notes written, handwritten by his mother, and I would like to share those with you because they're so interesting. I, Laura Steiger, was born on February 7th, 1893. My parents were Juan Maria Marone and Lorenza Serrano. I was born in the house that was demolished in order to make room for the El Camino Country Club. My father owned the 1,600 acres that's now known as Henny Hills. He also owned all the land on the north side between El Camino Real, and it went all the way down to that little cemetery by Interstate 5 where the Hungry Hunter is located now. Um, he also owned uh, land that he bought up at Montserrat, and he started buying land down at Otay Mesa. They had planned to move from here down to Otay Mesa, and he had gone down to create a, a grove and was watering, overworked, sat down by a tree to catch his breath, and died. They think he had pneumonia. But it was interesting that his mother uh, who lived out on the ranch, then moved into Oceanside on Detmar Street, where John's whole family was born, five children there. And the mother moved in with them and lived there for the next 25 years with the family. So when I, when I hear the historians and read some historical accounts of Agua Hedionda Ranch, I sometimes question, I've been trying to get to the bottom of it, because if his, his daughter, Laura, and his wife, Lorenza, both affirmed that he owned all that land, then I presume that they would have known that he did. Um, she, she drove a horse and buggy from the Adobe House into the Oceanside High School, where she graduated in 1913. There were six in that graduating class. She attended State Normal School in San Diego, which is now San Diego State, and then uh, Kelsey Jenny, Commercial College, graduating from the latter in the class of 1915. There were nine children in the Marone family. I won't go into all those names. Um, her oldest daughter, Doris Clark, um, tells me that one of uh, Laura's sisters, Ninny, was drowned with two other ladies in that 1916 flood. Do you remember the huge flood that left San Luis Rey devastated and left the Mission San Luis Rey was an island. There was water all around. And the three people who were drowned in that horse and buggy trying to get through are buried in the cemetery I've seen at, at the mission. I've seen, those, I've seen those markers. John Steiger and his family have a unique connection to California history, but his contribution is not confined to our historic past. He was also a participant and influential in the growth and development of Oceanside. Before there was a Camp Pendleton, for example, it was one of the many Mexican land grants with vast agricultural fields, food for the nation, and jobs for young high school students like John Steiger. As a student in, in high school, one of my summer jobs was working on the, in the lima bean fields in, uh, on Rancho Santa Margarita, which is now Camp Pendleton. And uh, uh, the job was, uh, I worked for Lima Bean Carter, uh, Mr. Carter picked us up in a flatbed truck at the corner of Mission Avenue and uh, 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 101 uh, Coast Highway or whatever they're calling it now. And uh, they, he would haul us out in this flatbed truck, flatbed truck, you know, and he sped like hell. 
going up the highway to get up to the lima bean fields and he'd get us there a few minutes before seven o'clock on the field and he watched every minute i think he had about 20 some of us and we we picked the uh, the morning glory out of his lima bean plants uh it was dry land farming so it was very, you know, they, they had to protect those plants and the, the fogs and what have you. They were, it ran along the coast. If you were driving on, uh, well, in fact, the, uh, the uh, new freeway, uh, the, the existing freeway, went through the lima bean uh, uh, fields that we used to work in. My father passed away uh, when I was a freshman in high school. And so our family was, had, we had a, a tough time financially. But we didn't know we were having a tough time. We all worked. We had paper routes. I'd get the route going, and one of my sisters would pick up and carry it on. And then I was kind of, I'd kind of break the, the way, and, and uh, we, we learned how to be teamwork. My mother took in sewing. And my mom was a great, great woman. During the war, they, they built the, uh, the Marines built a fantastic uh, military bases, you know, everybody knows that, but they built what we call the Del Mar Boat Basin uh, so that their amphibious uh, uh, maneuvers and, and in fact they could load ships out uh, that were going overseas. It was built uh, that large and uh, they built, when they did that then, they built an outer breakwater they went out uh, and, and around and uh, just like a great big arm coming out like this and the, their little boat basin is back in here, the ocean's out here and the boats came in like this. We thought, well, if they're gonna talk about making places surplus, Oceanside should put in for the boat basin, if it's gonna be surplus, an Oceanside should get it for a yacht harbor. I remember uh, some of the, uh, uh, well, there's always people that are against ideas. I, I, we, we learned that a long time ago, and, and uh, they, they started calling us, you know, who did we think we were, these young guys coming back from the service, and uh, you're insulting the, the people at the base. Well, they didn't know it, but the people at the base were our, they were our age. And uh, we got calls from them when they, the, the, the noise came up and was very critical about the suggestion uh, from uh, some of the colonels on, on behalf of the general that uh, you fellows don't, t don't listen to those people that are belly aching. You've got a good idea and uh, we'd like to talk to you about it. And that's when uh, Oceanside uh, attracted uh, a fellow by the name of Irwin Sklar who uh, was a well-to-do young man he wanted to get involved and he was a little too old for the JCs. But he saw that this, they were talking about a boat basin, the JCs were, you know. So he, he went into uh, Bob Schaefer's store, which was down the street from my office, and he uh, said, uh, uh, am I too old to, uh, to be in the JCs? And Bob Schaefer told him, uh, I didn't hear you. He said, what, what, are you, what are you talking about? He said, well, I want, I'd like to work on the, uh, help you fellows on this boat harbor thing. And uh, what's it cost to be in the JCs? And Bob Schaefer, you got your checkbook? Yeah, he gave him the figure of the dues and, and uh, didn't talk about the age at all. Well, Erwin Sklar was probably about eight years too old, which is nowadays, I think they, that doesn't make a difference. Or maybe it does. But anyway, Erwin Sklar said, I want to work on that boat basin deal. And so, uh, we, uh, he was appointed chairman of a committee of the JCs, which then gave him a soapbox. He could call the general and uh, say, I'd like to talk to you about uh, you know, what we might be able to do. And the general, come on out, yeah, we'd like to talk. They became very good friends, General Ridgely. Clark Irwin later went on to the city council of Oceanside and became one of our one of our best mayors that the city's ever had. Thanks to the Marines and the and the civilians working together, uh, the uh, Marines ended up. What did they get for it? They got the civilian concern about keeping the 
harbor mouth opened. The main action in the downtown area was, of course, the highway going through town. Uh, and there was no freeway. No so freeway. It so it went right down 101. And uh, the, uh, the downtown area uh, would have been about uh, from where the city, uh, the new Civic Center deal is there. Uh, the main action would be covering that area and coming south about uh, oh, a block past the Mission Avenue. So I would say from uh, from Seagays, uh, Seagays, Mission Avenue, Pierview Way, uh, that, that was, they were the main corners. The post office was on Seagays, which is First Street. There was a big standard station on the corner of Mission Avenue and, and Seagays that was open uh, 24 hours a day. A shell station across the street from that. And uh, there was a, across the street from the standard station to the west, there was another uh, Gilmore gas station, I believe, or no, it wasn't Gilmore, I don't remember, it was a small uh, company deal. Uh, and the Greyhound bus depot was in the middle of the block uh, on uh, between uh, Mission Avenue and Pierview Way, and they came around uh, in back. They pulled off, uh, they were coming on 101, they'd make a turn there at Pierview from the north, uh, go down a block and a left and come into the middle of the block and drive up and up into the back end of uh, a storefront on, uh, on, on 101. Well, Mary, was, uh, Mary had a farmer's insurance agency uh, in Encinitas. I'd seen her around Oceanside. She, her boss was uh, uh, president of the Oceanside Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, when I first saw her. And uh, he, uh, he would bring her along for uh, when, the, when there was a, a civic event, uh, it was easier to bring a secretary because so often, you know, things happen in the middle of the working day and what have you. And so uh, he had this cute, and she was a beautiful girl. Then she left Oceanside and went down to Encinitas, and she was she had her own insurance agency there. And uh, so on my way, I used to, in real estate, I was always going to San Diego to the title companies, and uh, I stopped by at her place in Encinitas to greet her, and that uh, goes on and on. We have three. Uh, Daughter lives up in San Francisco, works for the Bechtel organization, and we have a daughter in, in uh, Hollister. The youngest, the oldest is the one in San Francisco. The youngest is in Hollister. Her husband is uh, connected with one of these computer-oriented satellite deals that checks cities' uh, utilities and. Uh, and then our uh, son, we have, he was in the middle, John uh, Anthony Damien, not Juan Antonio. And uh, he uh, uh, is a, a credit uh, uh, whiz with the uh, uh, Bank of Commerce. I've always been concerned about the growth of Oceanside. And uh, the, uh, Sonia Henney and her brother had a ranch here. She was one of the first uh, ice skaters uh, who was an Olympic champion who uh, took that uh, notoriety. She was from Norway and took that notoriety and developed it into uh, being a movie star and an ice uh, show star. She bought uh, this 1600 acre ranch. This ranch went from uh, El Camino Real to the Tri-City Hospital area. And uh, from uh, the railroad tracks, they had trackage on the railroad tracks by Oceanside Boulevard uh, to frontage on Vista Way. And uh, they decided to uh, subdivide it. And uh, 
I was pulling for them, but they were being abused by experts that didn't know what they were talking about. And we used to run ads promoting the lots they had. We didn't represent them at all, but we, you know, agree anything to help them. And uh, we ran these ads. Well, one day her brother, Leif Henney, came in the office and he thought, uh oh, I wonder what it is. Sometimes people don't like you to do that. It's a little, you're not really supposed to promote somebody else's property. But he come in and he says, uh, he had a Norwegian accent and he said, uh, you know, why are you, uh, uh, I see you're, you're advertising uh, our lots. And I said, well, Mr. Henney, I'm hoping that you can sell them. I think it's very important for Oceanside that your development be uh, successful. And uh, he, he looked at me and he said, uh, well, I hope so too. He says, uh, would you handle it for us? And so we ended up handling their properties for years. And, uh, they built, I got him to build these four houses. This one and three more up the street. He had a lot. They, the people that designed his subdivision were just, uh, they, they, as I say, they abused it. Uh, they had lots that were, they wasted the property. I mean, it just, they, they built a road that's really, if you drive this, the old part of the road, it has a bank on it like you're going on a speedway, not a residential street, you know, things like that. Well, this street, I mean, this lot that, there are now four houses on it, and they, some of them have 200 foot frontage. We, we have 160 some frontage. How, that's still too much to take care of. I was flattered. My fellow councilman elected me vice mayor for four years. So one of the best jobs I had was uh, representing the city on Sandag. Sandag is the San Diego uh, Council of Governments or Association of Governments, whatever they call it. and. Uh, that's where all of the federal monies are cleared through Sandag. And uh, I recommend to the council that they keep the, somebody on there, period. Don't, don't put them on there for the, for the honor of it. Uh, put a worker on there. And because you, that's the only way I got, I was chairman of Sandag one year from a little town of Oceanside because I, I had some seniority. And, and it can be a real value. I mean, for example, one thing we did, we uh, stopped the uh, San Clemente from taking over part of Camp Pendleton. A lot of people don't know that even happened, but it had to go through the federal government, and it had to go through Sandag. Another thing we did on Sandag was uh, the Wahomey Rancho. Uh, the, the park, the money for that came from the federal government, and they were going to put uh, three regional parks in San Diego County. The word came down that ah, we only got money for two. San Diego who runs things, cut ours out. Well, I called Orby Mihalik in Vista, who was the mayor of Vista at the time, and said, Orby, they're trying to do something to us. What do you think? So we worked together, and we got the uh, thing turned around, and Oceanside got, and Vista. Uh, Wahomey Rancho uh, Park is partly in Vista and partly in Oceanside. John Steiger is another example of a California family with deep roots to our history, who has been instrumental in the growth, development, and evolution of North County. He worked with the community leaders who created the Oceanside Harbor, developed the Oceanside Airport, and redeveloped the downtown business and transportation hub. To learn more about John Steiger, and to view historical documentaries about North San Diego County, go to koct.org and click on Video On Demand. This program was made possible by a generous grant from the Parker Foundation. Gerald and Inez Parker.